Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, I got Zachary Babcock from Underdog Empowerment. What's cracking, Zach? What it do? Now, you said you've been messed with for your last name. Oh, man. All, all through growing up, what, 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 what? Babcock? Well, it's spelled B-A-B-Cock, so people call me Babycock or whatever. <laughs> well, I see that. That's not what the girlfriend said, though. What'd they say? Badcock? The Babcock. <laughs> Oh, you know that's right. <laughs> Folks, if you guys don't know who Zach is, he's got a podcast called Underdog Empowerment. Obviously, he empowers the underdog, shows them how to get places. Show, actually, you teach people how to basically blow up a podcast, yeah? Yeah. Do their own? That, yeah. Huh? I kind of fell into that. You know, I didn't do that in the beginning, but yeah. Because you just found out on your own? Yeah. Accidentally? By blowing up my podcast. Yeah, and he's got a big podcast. Well, top, Top what? Well, I don't know if it's dro- you know, dropping bombs level yet, but yeah, it's uh, it's doing pretty well. Good. Let me turn up your mic. Say something now. Yo, yo, yo. There we go. Now oh, we're yeah. talking business. <laughs> All right, good. So I'm glad you swung through. Where are you out of? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis. So you know Andy? Yep. I was just uh, interviewed him last week. Oh, Forsell is a freaking stud. Yeah, dude. I, I love his, his whole mentality. The he, whole, the he, whole. He's got a good podcast. Yeah, yeah. You ever recommend it? Yeah, you know, but you know, I'm over here on dropping bombs right now, man. So this. Oh, you can recommend old Andy any old time. Yeah. Fucking MFCO project. I listen to it. Sometimes, sometimes, like, I think, dude, he sounds a little bit fucking angry. (laughs) Yeah. But but it's mainly because he's just trying to get people to understand. You know, it's not as hard as everybody thinks. Like succeeding, quote unquote. Now, I'm of the opinion that you have to figure out what success means first. Mm. Then you can figure out how to get it. Because most people try and figure out how to get it. They end up becoming, quote unquote, successful, but they're not happy. And they're not happy because they assumed success was money and cars and that type of shit. And they got it. And they're like, what's next? I got a hole. Well, no kidding. You know why? Because you didn't build what you wanted you built what you thought everyone else thought was success yeah when in reality you should have built what you wanted now see i forgot to change my my desk red see and your camera dude he didn't even catch it <laughs> see you should have been you should have been producing this episode i don't mind that there's a blue there's a blue one look it's almost like bloods in the crypts yeah or all right. together happy in one room patriotic patriotic dude i am an i am a patriot yeah. Too many people bitch about America. Why? I don't know, dude. I've been to like Mexico and, and, and Europe and I, you know, every time I get back, I'm like, I'm glad I'm back. Like I, I'm thankful for the country. Amen. Personally. Yeah. I yeah. mean, fuck if you got guys like myself, I, I'm, I will never bitch about it. You got people that went to prison for over five years of their life and be able to. So you turn... went in the pokey. Yeah. What'd you do? Man, was a knucklehead. I did it. I was 17. I'm 30 now, but I was at the time I was 17 when I caught my first cases, and we just were Uh-oh, going out. Caught your first case. Yeah. Don't make me get my third strike. <laughs> yeah, it's a three and you're out. What is that rule? That I, that's a California thing. It's but, not in Missouri. But is it real? I think so. Like you get a third felony, no matter who you are, what you are, your life in prison, no matter what it's for. I, I heard that in California. Well, then why would any then why would anyone live there that had two strikes? <laughs> All the convicts are going to other states now. Well, fuck yeah, dude. If I had two strikes and I didn't learn the first two times and I might catch a third, I'm getting the fuck out of that state. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting out of that state even if I did learn my lesson. Because right. once you're in the system, dude, they could pull you back relatively easily. It's designed to keep you in there. Sure it really is. is. Yeah, it's a machine. Right. <laughs> it's a machine. <laughs> it's a machine, dude. It's a business. Yeah. The government has a business. And not, not only that, but now there's like private held prisons. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Dude. There's privately held prison systems that yeah. people, that, that states are subbing to private contractors. You know, it's it, it really is a business. And, and why why it is, the resources that they, that they quote unquote, are resources are complete bu- bullshit. They don't help you. It's really designed to keep you fucking 
dependent on the system. Welfare, food stamps, assisted living, that's keeping you dependent on the system. It's like a revolving door. And that's why most people never get out of that system. Like for me, like I feel blessed because I went back to prison just 20 days before my twin sons were born. And for I, how long? I went back for eight months after I did. Oh. I did four years flat the first time, got out for two years, and I went back for eight months. But that eight yeah, months. Yeah, but eight months ain't really going back. That's fuck. I've been drunk longer. <laughs> Dude, <clears throat> that eight months was 10 times longer than that four years. It felt like cause I was away from my kids, you know? And oh, yeah. That's all I ever wanted growing up. I, didn't, I wanted to be the father I didn't have. And, you know, I fucked that off. And What'd you do to get the eight months? Probation violation? DWI. I'll get you. Yeah, it will every time. Hey, you should be carrying around ammunition just in case you get pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, what happens if you get caught with one measly bullet? I, if I got caught with a bullet, I would go do fed time. It's five years, 85% fed time, any convicted felon. So, yeah, it's a no-no. So you can't even have a bullet. You know, I, I think I think I can get my right. I don't think I can. I know I can get my rights back for voting. You already have them back. Right, because I'm off of parole. You don't have to shit. get them. You don't have to get them back. Felons can vote, just so yeah. you know. Yeah, but I don't know about the gun law. No, nope. yeah. the gun law is your fuck, dude. For the rest of your life. And I believe yeah. that's why they made the laws in the first place, and they started putting a bunch of freaking felon jackets on people because yeah. it instantly dearms you. Yeah. And I think ultimately they they want to dearm. Yeah. At least the Dems do. Yeah, the Dems in the in the in the days. Yeah, like dude, when it comes to gun rights, what's your thoughts on that? I like it. I, it's it's part, it's the Second Amendment. It's what our country was founded upon. So what are, what are all the Democrats talking about? Let's get rid of our guns. That's bullshit, dude. You know, hey, you don't need an AK forty seven. They say because the the shit that happens, like those school shootings, which are unfortunate shit. But motherfucker, if we didn't have those in the first place, you know, like how are people going to protect themselves if a situation that were to arise? Yeah, listen, I compromise with people. Like if they said, hey, look, we're going to take all the automatic machine guns out of your hands because you're all idiots fuck it take my automatic machine guns right but if they say we're gonna take all of your weapons that's where i'm like bullshit yeah. fuck you you're gonna like all you're gonna do is, is 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 make it wide open for predator criminals yeah the reason why people don't kick in my door is because they know they're gonna get fucking shot Lay if down. they do yeah. yeah but as soon as they know there's no gun there's no guns in that household well then, dude, they kick it's your fucking pickings. door in. They, all they're doing is time and how long it's going to take to the with for the people that have the guns to show up. Yeah. Well, guess what? If you take my gun now, someone with a gun needs to show up. Why wouldn't you just give me the damn gun and save the tax dollars? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I ain't man. getting rid of guns. I'd never <laughs> vote for that. Me neither. So, dude, underdog empowerment. Tell me how you got that started. You got out of prison, obviously. Right. So, dude, I started it, and I'd, I'd I'd be fucking lying if I said I was doing it to to the main reason was to help other people. Yeah, I do love helping other people, but I started for myself first and foremost. You know, you gotta you gotta. See, there's a bomb, folks. You ain't always yes. got a bullshit. <laughs> for real though, you can't fill up any other cup from an empty cup. I I I I just can't stand those spiritual gangsters where they're like, oh, money, money's bad, money's the root of all evil. No, the love of money's root of all evil. You need fucking money to do good, but. I'm going off on a tangent here, but I started it originally for myself because I try. I got into entrepreneurship not because it was the cool thing to do. I got into it because it was like my only route. I couldn't get a job anywhere because I put myself in that position, of, and I always been an entrepreneur at heart, but was getting turned down left and right when I came home from prison the last time. Why? Because I'm a convicted felon. Six. I know, ago. but see, dude, that's that doesn't stop people. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't exactly. It doesn't stop people, and I'm a, I'm living proof of that. But um, when anytime you go to try and fill out an uh, application online as a convicted felon, they immediately, like literally, as soon as you hit submit, psh, denied every single time. And so I'm looking for all these shops that's getting denied left and right. That's because you don't apply online, bro. Yeah, you have to go get a uh, under pay under the table paying construction. No, job no, or, you just when there's an online application, you just still walk in. Dude, you, so before I went back to prison, I got hired at the Buckle. It's this clothing store. And I was working at a bar and grill 50, 60 hours a week. was one of their best workers. So I got hired at this clothing store because I, I would always go shop there. Manager one time was like, which one? Because I was like, hey, how much for that mannequin? He's like, which one? I was like, everything on that mannequin. And he's like, do you want the outer last? I said, no, the whole mannequin, man. And he's like, you want a job here? I'm like, damn right I do. And so he gave me the job. I'm in sales, something that I've always you know, been thrived in. I always did door-to-door -door sales and all that shit. And I sold 3000 one day. The whole store did 9000 my third day on. They gave me a promotion. 
And then uh, two days later, I put in my two weeks at the bar and grill. They're like, yeah, you're a convicted felon, man. You got to kick rocks. I'm like, fucking for real? I was your best salesman. You're... Buckled in? Yeah, the buckle the, at the at the gallery in St. Louis. Uh, at the time, man, that's what kind of led to my whole alcoholism afterwards because I started throwing a pity party and uh, not just keeping my chin up in search for other opportunity. And uh, that's what led me to go back to prison. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy fucking story, man. What prison were you in? I was in a bunch of different ones in Missouri, but I did most of my time at Pacific, which is right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. State or federal? State. Never been in federal. Yeah. Yeah. I heard federal's a little uh, brutal. They're always shipping you around everywhere. I call that diesel therapy. Diesel therapy. <laughs> they only ship you around if you're a fucking dipshit, though. I mean, yeah. not always. There's reasons, because, again, there's abuse in any system. But right. But... You don't get shipped around just because. You get right. shipped around because you're not behaving at the facility you're in. Yep. Or if you're like, time's getting shorter, so they drop your level down to yeah. a lower level and like shit like that. You go from an FCI high to a medium to a low to a camp. Yeah. You're yeah. thinking, how does this motherfucker know so much? Yeah. I heard you did, uh, I was listening to one of your episodes where you're talking about, you did, uh, you were talking about how they're innovative. You went and did like 24 hours or something in a jail, and they were like shooting the Cadillacs under the doors to pass notes around or whatever. Well, I can tell you this, dude. Prisoners are fucking geniuses. Smart son of a bitches. You got nothing, nothing but time to think about shit. I was talking about that. It's like, how in the hell is like, dude, how do I get this note seven cells down to the right? <laughs> fucking somehow, dude, it happens. Yeah. I seen people in prison make fucking apple pie in a microwave. Yeah. Good apple pie. Good apple pie. <laughs> yeah. Good apple pie. Like, how the <laughs> fuck did you just make that in a microwave? Yeah. So, yeah, well, I know a thing or two about a thing or two. <laughs> but I can tell you this. I think the whole reason for it is to keep you in a system. Mm -hmm. Now, is there some diabolical genius at the top? No. I think there's a lot of bureaucracy and stupidity, and laws get made for certain purposes that don't encompass every factor. So you, you get ensnared. Mm -hmm. But overall, you know, when you go to prison, dude, it – cost taxpayers X amount of dollars a year. It doesn't cost them that to fucking feed you. Right. Or, or, and then, then they put you to work at 10 cents an hour. Yeah. Well, dude, they're not getting 10 cents for the work. Right. So it's a business, man. I don't care what anyone says. The best way to do it though, dude, is don't break the law. Yeah. <laughs> Too, yeah. many, too many people, because again, I know a lot of people have been to prison and I get it, dude. You know, I know people that went to prison, didn't even do anything. Right. Literally. And then of course, people that went to prison did do something. But at the end of the day, it's kind of always your fault. And most people won't take that on. They won't say, dude, it was my fault. You're 100% right, dude. Most people don't. And that's the reason why they stay there. And I, w I did that up until the point. Blame everything else? Everything on everybody else except for myself. I yeah. was that guy. And then when I went back, though, and I woke up from an alcohol-induced blackout, fucking shit face from the night before in Ferguson jail, learning that I'm going back to prison, and found out that I was missing my twin's birth by 20 days. Bummer. Dude, it was the worst pain I've ever felt in my my entire life. Like, I can't explain. I felt, like, big enough to sit on a penny and swing my feet from it. But at the same time, it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. Woke you up. Dude, my paradigm on life and perspective on everything completely shifted. And right there, I was like, dude, I don't give a fuck what it takes. I'm going to get back home. I don't even know when I'm getting home. I don't know how I'm going to be happy and successful because I got, you know, all this shit that I put myself into but I'm going to figure it out and I, I don't need to know how to do it. I got my strong enough reasons why I'm going to do it in the first place. And immediately when I took that extreme ownership in my life, I'm like, look, I'm sitting here in the dropping bombs office right now. Boom. You say extreme ownership. Do you read the book? Dude, I've heard so many great things about that book. Uh, Jocko. Yeah. Dude, about the making the bed in the morning, like all that shit. I, I need to get that book and pump it up. Well, on the, the book, the book basically just says you're responsible. Per yeah. Period. For everything. Yeah, and it's true. All your success, your fault. All your failures, your fault. Everything. Yeah, and then you get weirdos and haters going, oh, my friend's got cancer. That's her fault. Dude, number one, yes. Yeah. Number two, um, we're not talking about like shit, acts of God. We're talking about, usually anyway, I'm talking about business. Right. Circumstances in life. Someone's in prison. They're thinking, fucking bullshit's what it is. You know, what happened? Oh, you know, I came out of the bar and, you know, some dude fucking bumped into me and I said, hey, excuse me. And he said, fuck you and looked at my girl like he wanted to fuck her. And so I punched him and he fell and he hit his head. That was your decision. 
That's right, dude. You could you could have looked like a pussy and walked off. You yeah. could have fucking swallowed your pride and walked off. Well, no, because dude, my friends were there. Then everyone would have called me a pussy. Right. Well, again, <laughs> you just made a choice. That's all. Yeah. You chose. I don't want to look like a pussy, but you didn't f- figure out or 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 quickly think about all of the consequences that might take place. See, yeah. people make choices, right? I try to tell people choose consequences. That's really what you're doing. So like I can get up and punch someone in the face, look cool to my friends, but if I can't figure out all of the possible consequences from doing that, it's hard to make the right choice. So it's like, oh, this motherfucker just mouthed off. I'm going to punch him in his fucking face. So you're innocent because again, dude, come on, we're men. We're getting fist fights. Right. But I walk up, pop you in the fucking nose and you fall down and bump your head on a bar stool. Next thing you know, you're dead. Mm-hmm. And I'm in prison and I'm going to be blaming everybody. That motherfucker had to poke my girl's ass. Like, well, no, I could have just let it go. So exactly. even though I understand tough decisions, but people need to make choices factoring in consequences. Cause dude, would you do dumb shit now? No, absolutely Fuck no. no. Absolutely. Hell no. no. Yeah. It, dude, I've learned my lesson. I went to jail one time for fuck, maybe 72 hours for a DUI. And when I got out, they gave me a fucking fine and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, cool. So went back to work, didn't have a license, wasn't supposed to be working without a license. So I had to say, I can't do this. I can't do that. So they made me another job. Well, because I technically switched jobs, the payroll missed a week. So I got paid one week late, which, which put me one day late from making my mandatory monthly payment. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, no big deal. I'll pay it on Friday. Let's say it was a Thursday. So I go in on, I go in on Friday when I get my money to pay the fucking thing. Oh, uh, 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 sorry, I was a day late. Blah, blah, blah. What? You got to see the judge. I'm like, okay. So I go see the judge. Dude, the motherfucker threw me in jail for 30 days. God damn. Everyone said they can't believe this, but whatever it is, you pissed him off. He didn't like the way you looked, whatever. Dude put me in jail for 30 days. Over now, a late payment. Yeah. Now I, I head to jail. They walk in, they give me a fucking cell all by myself, brand new pillows. It wasn't that bad. And then two days into the deal, everybody's wondering why the fuck am I in a cell by myself? And why do I have brand new pillows? And why do I have a manicure? <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, I don't know. And then someone came up to me at a lunch at lunch one day and said, you fitting to get jumped. And I said, I said, what? He said, they think you five Oh. And I'm like, who? <laughs> and you know, he won't even talk. He's just kind of giving me a heads up. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Yeah. And this is a rough place, dude. I keep to myself, dude, it didn't matter, dude. When you're in that system, man. So anyway, long story short, dude, I put my ass on, I put my ass in there. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that made the choice to wait a day. Right. And I was blaming the judge and blaming everybody. Fuck, dude. It was my stupidity. So when you think about it, you wake up in the morning. If you're in prison, it's 99.9. There's always exceptions. You know, didn't factor that in. But 99% of the not time, you're in prison because you made the wrong fucking choice. Period. Yeah. Which means take responsibility. Doesn't, doesn't mean you're a scumbag or a loser or a fucking asshole. It means you made a bad decision. Right. Good. So how do you succeed? You do the opposite. You just start making great decisions. Yeah. You can usually tell how well somebody makes decisions by looking at their life. Do they have a house and kids and family and, and, and cars and responsibility and insurance? And, you know, are they, are they living? Right. You don't have to be a millionaire to make good choices. Right. But are they living? Do they have love in their life and, you know, responsibility? Are they taking care of their kids? Do you can tell a man's decisions by his life exactly. and, and woman for that matter. Like men, women doesn't matter, dude. Your, 100%. your, your decisions dictate your fucking outcome. Bomb. Am I lying? Bomb. Dude, 100% man. Cause if you think about it, dude, I, I at the time I, I had never read this book, but when I read this book, I'm like, Oh my God, it makes so much sense. Uh, a man search for meaning by Victor Frankl, dude, that went through the, the Nazi death camps and brutal torture and all that. And he talks about one of the main lessons he talks about in there. He's like, in between the stimulus, you know, whatever happens, the shit that you can't control, 
and your response in between that is your freedom to choose how you respond to any situation. Which means you control every situation. Every situation. A fucking tornado could come through here and tear down half this building and like you lost so much money in your business. But what's your decision? How are you going to respond to that? You know, like, all right, am I going to sit here and be all fucking pissed off and throw away the rest of my money? And be like, oh, fuck. Or... Are you going to fucking do some gangster shit and rebuild? You know, like, it, that's so, your so is that what you did? You got out of prison, blamed everyone, woke up when you went back, got out, and then what? <laughs> I got into uh, network marketing for the first two years. What and, company? Uh, Zango got bought out by Zija. Zango. At the time, well, I, what's the big wigs in that company's name? It's um, Joe Morton. No, no, no. It's, Aaron it Garrity. Of, no, it was one of the leaders. He'd always go, he came on board and he said something like, oh, so, so, and then I chose Zango. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my Remember head. Remember that dude? He had a big house. Like It could have been. He was one of the big leaders. Who was one of the big leaders in that? You got Ray Heron. Nope. Uh, Richard. Uh, no. You say his name, I'll know it. It's, it's, a, it's an odd name. Yeah. It's a unique name. Yeah. I can't think of it right off the top of my head. Yeah. You know, at the time, Zango. I didn't go. Yeah. It's funny, dude, because I didn't even know what network marketing was at the time, so you couldn't even scare me off the word pyramid scheme. I was like, fuck it, it's an opportunity. Let's go make it happen. And um, I built almost a $2,000 a month residual income within my first six months. And I'm like going, I'm like, you know, I'm taking every bit of that opportunity because I was hungry, still am. And, um, but I'd lost my passion for it because I'm not, there is good companies out there and there's good network marketers out there. But I was taught to just go through my list and just, you know, like bomb, bar Some and will, spam. some won't, so what next? Exactly. And that's all it was. And I lost my passion for it and... I ended up stepping away from it after two years and beginning of 2017 to step into what I'm doing now. Didn't have a clue what I was doing then neither and still don't. Like, that's one thing I, 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 um, I don't knock all the gurus, but there's a lot of fake gurus out there. And like, dude, I don't know all this shit. Like, I'm figuring, I figure most of this shit out as I go, man. You know, it's like, you know, it, people that think they have to know all the hows. They don't ever do shit. They get stuck in that paralysis analysis stuff. Yeah, it's good to have a plan and know where you're going and know what you want out of life. But if you're trying to plan every single little detail, man, you're never going to get anywhere in life, man. You just got to make that decision. You got to be certain, you know, in yourself, belief in yourself, your self-worth, you know, of who if you if you have full self-belief in yourself, I feel like people are attracted to that, you know. Well, true, the confidence. But I will argue a little on that debate because – it can go both ways. Like if yeah. you take the average age of a person that takes, for example, a leadership course, it's 42. 42. Mm. Which means, when do you start working? Yeah. 18? Yeah. Okay, so before anyone ever picks up leadership, they're 42, which means they've spent th 20, what, four years. Yeah, I didn't graduate. 24 fucking years of learning the hard way. Why didn't they just take a leadership course at 18? Right. Yeah. So sometimes, dude, it, it's better not to just go out and learn the hard way because that's what I did. Right. Sometimes it's better to fucking know, figure it out, plan it out, but be, but, but, but be careful because what you're saying I agree with, which is you wait so long because everything has to be perfect, you don't do anything. Well, that's called perfection kills progress right like go 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 out there and learn but also seek knowledge so you don't have to learn forever because dude i'm yeah. i'm telling you if i could learn what i learned now when i was 21 you'd be so far ahead way of ahead i would have yeah. reached my level now at fucking probably 30 yeah i agree dude i I'm, started at 30 yeah I'm and then i right and, and i still didn't seek any fucking knowledge because i had your attitude which right. is fuck quit fucking asking just go do it well and, and guess saying, what you will learn that way yeah but you'll learn the fucking long way. Like yeah. if, if you find someone that's doing what you want to do, you fucking save up your money and you give them money and you say, hey, show me how to take days to learn what took you 10 fucking years to learn. And if that person's good, because there are fake motherfuckers out there. Right. But if that person's good, they can give you knowledge to accelerate your journey. That's yeah. all I'm saying. So, so there's a blend there. 100%. Wait. Well, I, don't I, wait. To get the answers, but get the answers before you fucking go. Like, what's so, like, get the answers. Yeah. If somebody wants a podcast, dude, will they be better off listening to you or figuring it out on their own? They're going to be better off listening to me. Will they get there quicker? Right, 100%. Will they get there with less pain? Yeah. So And avoid all the mistakes okay, that I Okay, so, so just be, I mean, use that as proof of what I'm saying. Now apply it to what you were saying before. See if it changes your perspective. Because there are people waiting for perfection, which is stupid. 
But there's also people running out there on that advice going, fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Zach said I don't need to n- know nothing. And then yeah, I and then, said that wrong, too, because that was not what I was trying to I say. I know, but I did it, too, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm 50, motherfucker. I look like, what, 30? Yeah. No, I just joking. But <laughs> I definitely don't look 50, but I am 50. And, man, I'm telling you, I feel like I, I lived 100. Yeah. Because I didn't seek any fucking knowledge first. I just had that attitude you did, which is, fuck it. Like when I quit my job, I didn't know how to start a business. I, dude, I have a software company. I don't know. I didn't know anything about software. I just did it. And right. then you learn. And now contracts, give me a contract. You you probably can't fuck me right. with a contract. When I started, dude, I got hammered a hundred times because I didn't know. Notwithstanding meant, meant everything I just said is irrelevant. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? I didn't know that. So you learn shit the hard way. Do a blend of both. Take what he's telling you, folks. And go, but take what I'm telling you and fucking get knowledge on the way. Just like if you're going to LA and you get lost in fucking Pahrump and they tell you go that way and you're heading to San Francisco, you're not getting to LA, dude. Right. So so what are you trying to say? Get to San Francisco, figure out you ain't fucking there, figure out how to get to LA and eventually one day you'll end up in LA. True. If you don't start going, you'll never get there. True. Right. But dude, how about drive a little bit? Realize you're lost. Stop. Ask for directions. You'll get to L.A. quicker. I guarantee to you. 100%. So do both. There's a bomb for you, Bomb Squad. Yeah. So so Underdog Empowerment, where do they find that on iTunes, Spotify, and all that shit? Because these guys, Bomb Squads, dude, I'm turning them on to all kinds of people. <laughs> like, I guarantee you people are listening to MFCO because of me. Yeah. And vice versa. I was on Andy's show. Yeah. But um, where do they listen to you? Any anywhere that you can listen to podcasts, and it's too. called Underdog Empowerment. Yeah, why underdog? So, man, I got into it, man, and and kind of go back what you were just saying. I've been hiring mentors from day one. I never, I, I didn't mean to like for it to come off that way because it's stupid not to. I asked everybody on my show if you could go back to the beginning of your underdog entrepreneur journey, give yourself one piece of advice to get a head start or a leg up. What would that be? Ninety percent of them say find somebody that has what you want and pay them some fucking money so you can learn and, and up. There's no faster shortcut in life than that. And like, not only that, have you ever heard there aren't no shortcuts? Right, you got to do the work. Yeah, but have you heard there's no shortcuts? Nah, I mean, I mean, I heard it, but what, what's which it, what's is it? bullshit. Yeah, that's bullshit. There yeah. are no shortcuts. Just work hard, son. Shut the fuck up. Right. There's shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, there's shortcuts all over the place. Yeah. Like especially with marketing. Yeah, like this podcast. The only reason it's grown is because people must like it and share it because I've never advertised it. Right. But, dude, there's a strategy. If I would have known, this podcast would be 10 times bigger. Yeah. I don't know the I don't know the fucking secrets. Well, those are the secrets. Those are the shortcuts right. that people claim don't exist. Yeah. What about nice guys finish last? You heard that? Yeah. It's total bullshit. Right. What about we only got 24 hours in a day? You yeah. ever heard that? Yeah. That's bullshit. Right, because you can multiply yourself. Exactly. So you scale. Yeah. I mean, most of the shit we're taught is bullshit, dude. Right. It's bullshit. Save your money. You heard that one? Yeah. What for? Yeah. What are you saving it for? Yeah, exactly. Well, in case an, in case an emergency happens, what makes you think an emergency is going to happen? <laughs> Besides that, the reason a lot of times an emergency happens is because you fucking didn't use your money to fucking grow your strength. Mm. So now an emergency would have been a Nats fucking nuisance, but now it's an emergency <laughs> because you didn't fucking use your money to scale and now you're fucked. Yeah. So there's always these everyday traditional bits of advice we get. And a lot of the time it's wrong. Yeah. You agree? 100%. What's the one thing that you always try to teach people? You know, it, it evolves and it's changed because man, one thing I like to teach people is not to ask, act further along than what you really are. And the reason why I say that is because after I blew up the podcast, I launched it, it became a top 200 rated podcast and started interviewing celebrities and shit like that. And, uh, started building a brand, you know, and getting known and stuff before I was like a nobody, everybody like counting me out, all that stuff. Um, I teamed up with two guys and, uh, one of them had a program for lead gen customer acquisition and scaling a business. And uh, he had a thousand successful graduates with this program and over 20 million in revenues. And we were pushing this out with me, like being the face. We're Sounds bringing... like Keanu, what's his name? Can I or whatever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're pushing this out, right? And like we're bringing in some students and stuff, but I felt like a total fraud. I felt like an imposter. I felt like. Why? 
because I'm sitting here trying to teach people what I'm trying to achieve by teaching it. It was ass backwards. At the time, I was broke as fuck. And I'm sitting here trying to teach lead generation, customer acquisition, and scaling a business. Even though that program... That's, that sounds like hardcore closer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was. It was. But that's how I... Well, felt. I mean, he, he, he again, he, he'll he admit it. He was in prison, too. Yeah. You know Stuman? Yeah, I'm going on the show next... All right, we're going to get an in-person interview next week. Yeah, Stuman's a good dude. Like, he's yeah. been in prison. He's a smart dude, streetwise. But, you know, he, he had to fucking scrap his way up, too. Yeah. But, you know, at some point in time, if he would have waited to be good, he never would have been good. Right. So he had to fucking say, let me teach you the shit I know, which, again, if you say it right and ethically, yeah, you can fucking, like, again, 100%. dude, I, I'm just learning the marketing game, mm -hmm. but literally I could help a company market, even though I've never successfully marketed. Why? Because I just spent a hundred grand and dealt with all the people that are doing all the shit and documented it all and understood it all. So now I understand it, but I haven't done it. Does that mean I can't help somebody? Well, yeah, you can definitely help. Yeah. 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 Giving him new perspective. Yeah. yeah. Fuck Zach, Zach's going to be like, fuck all my material. I need new material. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Dude, someone's out there with a, with a damn, like, am I getting fans that have flashlights or do we have an audience holding up the flashlights? Do they love you? Is it Zach they love? Man, it's, it's, it's Vegas out here, man. They're all coming from the strip. Dude, and here's what's good about dropping bombs. See, at the end of the day, I'm just fucking talking. Now, you could say something, dude, that could help a listener right now. Someone could be listening going, fuck, I just got out of prison. I was blaming everybody. You know what I'm saying? So when you just shoot the shit like this, it helps people. How? I don't know. And nor do I care as long as, you know, fuck, it's fun, it's entertaining, and it, and it might help somebody. Good. So, like, if someone said, how do I build a podcast up? I'd say, fuck, I don't know. I got two microphones. I got Libsyn. I started talking and I uploaded it. Now, just because someone does exactly what I did doesn't mean they're going to win. Right. How, what's their material? What's their personality? What's their sound? What's their voice? What's their vibe? I know people that listen to Drop Bombs and said, oh, this fucking guy's a clown <laughs> and stop listening. They're over there listening to Seth Godin and fucking somebody else and, you know, whatever. Like Ed Milet. You listen to Ed? Yeah. See, his shit's fucking powerful tactical motivational like ed's fucking got gold i ran into someone the other day like you know ed's just preachy i'm like no the fuck are you talking about <laughs> preachy he's just telling you what he's learned you fucking cock smoke right. but why is that well because dude if i go on your podcast i bet you people are gonna like me all yeah. of them no people will you some of my bomb squads is gonna start becoming listeners of you some of them you might be like fuck i don't listen to brad anymore fucking zach's the dude i like you're never going to make everybody happy. Exactly. Every, anytime, ever in your life. So that's another empowering that you can empower underdogs with. Focus in and show people that, dude, when you care more about what other people think than when you, than what you do, that's a problem. That's a that's a weakness. That's why I love your style, dude, that I don't give a fuck attitude. And, and, and the reason why so many people suffer from that is because, all right, society places these standards and we're all secretly failing to meet these standards because there's no such fucking thing as the ideal human being. Now, I get the reason why they do that because who would want to live in a society that allowed murder, rape, and all that shit, right? Okay, but if you truly want to help somebody and do good for somebody, that's completely different between making them happy. If you fucking give a kid hap uh, candy all the time, you're making them happy, right? But is that doing them good? Fuck no. no, the kid's going to get diabetes and be a fat kid or whatever. So those are two complete total opposites. And so many people are scared to say what they truly feel. You should and go on Gary Vee's podcast. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, he's on this big happiness kick right now. Fuck that. We just be happy. Well, dude, it's easy for you to say, motherfucker. You already got $100 million. <laughs> you but, got, but We but, all got a dark side. I know, but, though, what, but what you just said was a great fucking point. You know, you give a kid candy his whole fucking life, he'll be happy, but he'll also be dead quicker, and that ain't good for him. So happiness isn't always what you should be looking for. It's not happy. Doing good for someone and happiness are not the same thing. Listen up, folks. <laughs> Listen up, folks. We're dropping bizzles up in this bitch. <laughs> Dude, so if you think about it, if you really want to do good for other people, most people won't say how they truly feel because they're scared of how they'll be perceived by other Judged. people. yep. Fuck that, man. We all have a dark side. We're fucking human beings. We all have dark thoughts, dark emotions, dark desires. And I'm not saying be a bad person, but you can use your dark side to do good shit. 
like the book Relentless was so fucking awesome. You had a whole chapter talking about that. You got to tap into that dark side to to just dominate shit, you know, and and you can do good with that, you know, it, but people are scared like, I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or I don't want, you know, this person. Here's the deal, man. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, like you just said, there's always going to be people that love you and people that fucking hate you for it. Yep. So it's so much easier just being yourself in the process. Period. Totally agree. Like the other day, someone was talking about when this marketing thing comes up, we're going to ask for their email and their phone number. <laughs> then we'll let them, let them in on the, on the message. And I said, why? And he says, well, because you want to get their email and phone number so you can market to them. And I said, they, don't, they haven't even heard your fucking message. Like, right. Why do you want a phone number of somebody that doesn't fucking like you? Right. Like, what, what are you going to do with it? Bother them? Get an unsubscribe? <laughs> I go, why don't you fucking worry about their contact information after they like you? Mm. Like, if they like you, I'd like to get your information. Yeah. But most people start with, give me your information to see if I like you. And that's starting to fail. So like with Lightspeed system, you can create an interactive landing page that lets you deploy an interactive video where I don't need your fucking email or your contact information until we've talked a little bit and and we've decided that we like each other. We're a fit. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want your contact info. Yeah. And dude, it's good. The conversion's crazy with this little tool because everybody's used to being asked for your fucking info. Yeah. Hey, get my seven page report. Put in your email. Dude, no one's stupid. Everyone knows what's happening nowadays. Right. I'm going to put in my email. I'm going to get some fucking PDF document. And then you're going to fucking blast me with 700 different offers. Yeah. How do you, how do you like do a pattern interrupt on that? Don't ask for their information. Just pop up and fucking interactively see if you resonate with them. That's another thing. People won't say it because, ooh, I, people might not like it. Dude, that's exactly what you want in marketing. Mm-hmm. I just want to know the people that like what I'm saying. So if you say something vanilla where nobody really likes or dislikes, you're wasting your advertising dollar. 100%. See, that's a fucking bomb right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody's going to know about you. are boring. I know, but it's the truth. No one will take a position because they don't want to offend either side. It's like, dude, offend if mm-hmm. you offend. Yeah. 100%. And if, bro. because if, even if you offend one side, the other's half loves you. Mm-hmm. So guess what? That's who you're looking for. The people that love you. The and people that, the people that want to listen to your podcast. Yeah, dude. Like in, in the people that you offend, a lot of times, like say you're on social media with it, they'll go fucking share your shit to all their people and they'll bring more people into the war. But a lot of people they share it to will bring other people to see it and they'll resonate and you'll gain more yeah. people that agree with you in the process. Yeah. Haters fuel the fire. Yeah, exactly. So everybody's afraid to be. I don't want to say polarizing because you don't have to be polarizing, but take a position, make a point, state a belief, and be proud of it, which is yourself. And whether it's dark or not, right. like someone says, like I fuck goats. <laughs> well, I wouldn't advise you run around telling everyone you fuck goats unless there's an underground society of goat fuckers right. that you're trying to reach. <laughs> then I would highly recommend that you say that, right? Right. Because that's who you're looking for. Yeah. I need other goat fuckers. <laughs> so then you have to say, I'm a goat fucker. Are you a goat fucker? I'd love to connect. <laughs> but at the end of the day, without being that extreme, a business does the same thing, but on a, on a vanilla level. They'll, they'll talk about a product or a service or, or, or an opinion, and it's very vanilla because mm-hmm. they don't want to offend anybody. Well, that's why your shit's not working. Right. Yeah. You, got, you, got to, you got to state your opinion. Yeah, be smart. Be strategic. Don't try to piss people off. But at the end of the day, have a fucking position. Mm. Have a viewpoint. Bomb. Huh? Bomb. <laughs> That's right. All right. <laughs> Normally I decide, but fuck, I happen to agree. <laughs> so what are you out there doing? Just podcasts? Like, how can the Bomb Squad help Zachary Babcock? You know, I had a buddy named Tom Babcock growing up. Oh, wow. Oh, Tom Babcock. We, we didn't ever call him Babycock, <laughs> but it was funny that he had the word cock in his name. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, dude... Really, if if you enjoy this interview, I'm really passionate about the podcast. You know, I'm not pushing anything but the podcast. I'm really passionate about that. I got a whole mission behind that shit. You just interviewed Andy Frisella. Who else? You got some big wigs on that thing. Yeah, yeah. How I mean, you I getting got, to them? I do just like I did with you, just reaching out and being myself, man, and uh, just stating my intention and also leaving it with like, hey, man, you know, no pressure if this is something you don't want to do. No worries. You know, I'm glad to be connected. I really do follow your content. I do appreciate it and shit, and I hope to collaborate in the, in the future. But, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do that. But really, man, it, it's funny you mentioned Andy because uh, last week he kind of changed my pers- perspective on things just like you did here with me now. But um, 
before I was all like that underdog, like out to prove a motherfucker wrong, like, you know, like, cause they said I can't have it. And I think that's good in the beginning, but Andy said some shit. He's like, man, I'm not, I'm not really out to prove anybody wrong anymore. I'm in competition with myself. You know, it's like, cause yeah, I, you reach a level where that's not so important. Yeah. It's what drove you there though. Yeah. But it doesn't continue. And now it's like, you have to be in com- competition with yourself because you're the only one that's going to get you moving any further than that yeah and it's like you're not in competition with anybody else you are the motherfucker that everybody's in competition to get on that level you're not you're above that level at that point so i was like wow man that's some that's some real shit you know that's it was i was glad to be able to share that with my audience because like i've been before it's like yeah fucking you know use that was he on yours or were you on his he was on he was on my show and and uh when i asked him about that it was like it just changed the whole perception and of that and i started switching up the messaging i'm starting to implement that because it's it's real man it's good to use that as motivation in the beginning but what really matters in the end of the day is the reasons why you're doing it if you don't have those in place you know that you don't you don't really have that juice motivate the motivation is just the prove the motherfuckers wrong in the beginning but motivation comes and goes man you got to have those reasons why that will get you through the times when you're not motivated is your reasons the twins it started off as that and they still are but it's evolved so much more like dude i'm getting ready to hire my first guy um, i'm gonna start hiring convicted felons and uh, nice yeah and what i'm doing i'm giving them the resources that aren't offered but here's the vision with it they're gonna come work for me they're gonna learn online marketing shit i'm gonna start them off at like close to minimum wage or something they're gonna why why do they have to be convicted because I want to, I, I want to be it, people that are coming out of prison. I want to be able to help the guys, not all, because not everybody coming out of prison wants to turn their life around, but the ones that do, and I'll be able to know who they are and be able to get. I don't know nothing about scaling a company or nothing, but I'll get like the right people in place that can systematize. Andy knows how to scale. Ed right. knows how to scale. Anyone right. that's scaled knows how to scale. Right. Exactly. But dude, when you say convicted, th- listen to what that sounds like. Convicted felon makes them sound like there's some fucking murderer with fucking (laughs) slobber coming out of their face like you know oh he's a convicted felon (laughs) and it's like dude i know convicted felons that are fucking normal yeah good everyday people but the reason i said why convicted is because what if someone like could use your help but they never fucking went to prison right right fuck them Nah, I mean, I help them out when I work all the time. I help entrepreneurs out through my programs with the podcast and shit, but even outside of the podcast, just the So the, the people pod- don't have to be convicted felons for you to help? No, hell no. Mo- my audience on Underdog Empowerment is all entrepreneurs, you know what I mean? Um, and that's what that's the space, but I also wanted to create a program specifically for the convicted felons and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, give them a little hey, hey. I, I would say, I was going to say, uh, what the fuck, uh, like a hand up. But now I was about to say head up because nine times out of 10, you know how you help the convicted felons coming out of prison? Teach them that that doesn't matter that you're a convicted fucking felon. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, so it's really just like, dude, wake them up. Yeah. Because like that whole hashtag woke, like, dude, I want to start making that my thing because, dude, there's people that I say shit to and I'm like, you didn't realize it was this easy. Right. And they're like, dude, I swear to God, I've never thought of it that way. And I'm thinking, <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Dude, there's so many people sleeping, especially convicted felons. Why? Because, dude, they just spent years in an institution that ultimately conditioned them to not yeah. believe in themselves. Yeah. And or feel like everybody and everything is against you. Like, why would anybody ask, are you a convicted felon on a fucking application? Who gives a fuck? Right. Didn't I pay my dues? I'm out here, ain't I? Right. You can't pay your dues? So what are you trying to do? Basically say that fucking once you're a convicted felon, you don't have the right to fucking succeed in this world and everyone should not help you. Right. Because And that's exactly how you feel coming out of prison, what you just described. Exactly. And not only that, but like, that's the way it's set up. Like, does the government not want anybody to fucking help these people? Right. Like, that's why I like the idea. Because goddamn, dude. Just because you went to prison doesn't mean you were a fucking piece of shit. doesn't right. mean you're going to kill people, rape people, hump people, steal from people. It just means you made a fucking mistake. Yeah. So I made a mistake. I went to prison, which is punishment enough. Right. I got out, which means the government that put me there obviously thinks I've paid my dues, and now there's your second chance. But nope, we don't want to give you a chance. We're going to make it federal law yeah. to ask if you've ever been in here, and if you have... We're gonna make it taboo to hire you. Yeah. How exactly. about how about when you come out of federal prison the first time, your record's expunged? That's them trying to help you. Yeah. Like exactly. fucking, hey, you don't have to tell anybody. This yeah. is between us. You learn your lesson, prick. 
Right. People are like, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, go out there. Now, the second one, maybe maybe uh, I need to start warning motherfuckers if you're going to crack <laughs> crack us twice. Right. The third one, dude, you're a motherfucking felon. I think a convicted felon should mean something more than it means right now. Right now, it just means you got caught, you made a mistake, and you went to court and fucking got sentenced. Right. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. Yeah. Now, Three, four, five, six convictions of the same thing. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, but it does mean you're stupid. And you need help. <laughs> yeah. It means you're stupid. Yeah. Because, yeah. dude, you only need to go to prison fucking once. Yeah. Like, your second time was too many, dude. Yeah, exactly. You should have learned your fucking first time. But yeah. people take people get, like, again, it's hard. Cause, and I'm only saying this from experience, learning, but looking back. Moving forward, fuck, I went to jail. I had... I had several DUIs. Like, why didn't I learn? Because, dude, I didn't know this shit then. Right. You have to fucking learn it. But going back, looking back, you shouldn't have been in there the second time. You're yeah. like, thank God. No, not thank God. You shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Thank God you did, so you woke up. Now the question is, how the fuck do we wake up everybody? Not just convicted felons, everybody. Yeah. Because, dude, all my, my whole mission is to basically live in a world where success is pretty common. Like if you say you're getting married, oh, congrats. I, I expect you to be married forever. Oh, you're starting a business. Oh, congrats. I'm expecting you to fucking win. Yeah. Why? Well, because, dude, that's what happens. Like, fuck, success is normal. Yeah. So how do we get more successful worlds? We got to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. In your case, podcasts. Dude, my job is to get you to put a course, whether it's on Lightspeed or not is irrelevant, but, but obviously – light speed's the best option <laughs> point being is i just want you to go make a fucking course on how to help fucking people with podcasters now someone could say dude you you, you shouldn't be making one well who the fuck who are they to judge you got one right it's out there you learned what to do right right you're not saying i'll show you how to make the number one podcast in the world well the motherfucker that's got the number one better teach me that right but how to build a podcast there's people right now that could build a successful podcast could easily Become the next big podcaster, Gary V, Andy Frisella. Who's all the other big ones? I mean, there's some big ones that you've heard. I mean, you always hear them. Um, Joe Rogan. There's tons of them out there. Yeah, so man. like, dude, they may never be the Joe Rogan if they don't find out from you how to do it. So that my whole goal is just get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. I don't care what the knowledge is. I want Andy Frisella to teach culture. I want Ed Milet to teach fucking basic business principles, motivation, personal development, how to learn skills. Cardone will teach you fucking real estate. Mm. You'll teach fucking podcasts. And guess what? Not everybody wants to be a podcaster. Not everybody wants to be in real estate. Who gives a shit? Right. That's how we get the world more successful. Yeah. 100%. We get the knowledge flow going. <laughs> Amen to that, bro. You ain't lying, dude. So... I'm gonna go check out your podcast. I didn't. I, I I didn't know you were a podcaster. Oh, you didn't. I I knew you had a podcast, but it seems like oh fuck, everyone's got a podcast now. Right. <laughs> everybody does. It seems like to me. But yeah. I'm but I'm in this space, so it's like everybody has a podcast. Right. Not everybody literally has a podcast. You know what's interesting? About everyone it too? should have a podcast. They should. Though. Fuck yeah, dude. You know why? Here's why. Number one, when you have a podcast, you're gonna you have to record something. Whether it's you or a guest, you have to record something. So guess what? You record your thoughts, your opinions. And when you start to speak your mind and 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 talk, right? Yeah. It requires you to think. And when you start to think, you start to fucking realize. And when you start to realize, you start to awaken. Like you start to realize, fuck, I didn't realize this, but God damn, I hate sports. Mm. Fuck, I just did three episodes and bash sports. I don't even fucking like sports. <laughs> So it starts to get you to know yourself, but ultimately, when you when you speak, um, it, it it requires thought, and when you think, you start to discover, and when you discover, whether it's good or bad, you discover, and then you start to find yourself. I, I think everyone should have a podcast. Whether anyone listens to it is irrelevant. Right. I think everyone should have a podcast, just like I think everyone should journal. Do you journal? Yeah, absolutely. Dude, and I write down my goals, write down journal, and journal my thoughts, emotions, and shit that I'm going through at the time. And it then helps. 100%. Dude, if you, I, I, I know almost nobody successful, mm -hmm. the general sense of success, right. money and all that, that doesn't write shit down. Yeah. Like, Dude, it's powerful, man. It, it's like, you're. it's not just venting or whatever people, you're like, manifests. Yeah. And you're, you're 
expressing your shit on it, like you said, and manifesting it, and you have something to aim at. And then, dude, I, I kind of go overboard with that a little bit, but dude, yeah, absolutely. Dude, I started this company at your age, 30. Wow. I woke up at 30. You woke, you're ahead of me. When'd you wake up? It's 26. Yeah, see, I woke up at fucking 30. Wow. And I accidentally woke up. And I was kind of groggy for about 10 years. Yeah. So I, I didn't just bang, <laughs> yeah. I'm wide awake. But now I'm a fucking awake. Yeah. I'm so awake now, I could help a lot of people. Before, I wouldn't have said that. I would have said, what the fuck do I know? I'm still building a business. Right. Well, when you start to realize everybody knows something. Yeah. There's people that'll teach you how to pick up the ladies real good, but they can't teach you how to balance your checkbook. Right. Then there's people that'll teach you how to balance your checkbook, but they can't get laid to save their fucking life. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't we put those two together? So now they're both fucking and making money. <laughs> yeah. The abundance mentality right there. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's that's the whole secret. That's the whole thing. People think there's some fucking secret answer. There's no secret answer. Share your knowledge. Yeah. There could be a pot grower out there that could show you how to make five pounds out of a two pound crop. Yeah. Well, does that not help you 100%. if you're in the pot business? Yeah. Well, fuck, dude. Where's that person that knows that shit? Because they do know that shit. Yeah. And then the people that don't know it start producing more from the same crop. Yeah. Does that not help the whole world? 100%. Now more money, more people buying bikes. Well, fuck, the pot dealer or the pot expert just helped the bike dealer, and nobody even realized it. (laughs) So that's why it's my goal, dude. I think to live in a world that's more successful, everybody has to have more knowledge, specialized knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, you you should have a fucking VT system, bro. I'm gonna I'm, close you before the podcast. Yeah, is I know, on. I knew it was coming. Yeah, well, absolutely. because dude, because dude, you can't be everywhere at once. So I want to question. I want to ask you. Can I ask you a question about it? Do go ahead. So I I already looked into it, looked into to your website. So I've been checking all of it out, and um, I wouldn't only just want it for like the the podcast course because I already got the the program where I've already gotten tons of people results and shit. So I'm getting ready to build out the course. That's the next step, right? But also for my team because we have a production company. And like, but I'm not acting further along what I really am. Like I literally, Brad, I just started fucking making money in my business a few months ago. I just cracked it. Uh, so what's your question? Would that VT with the system, I don't understand the full part of how it helps like with training your team and shit like that. Well, because first of all, most companies that think they train aren't training. They're just basically exposing people to information. Mm. So if you had the choice of hiring a person that knew nothing about you, your brand, your goals, your vision, Mm -hmm. or someone who knew everything about your brand, your goals, and your vision, which would you pick? The the second one. Okay. Well, strangers don't know that shit. So how the fuck are you going to show them that shit? Right. Well, you have to tell them. You have to train them. You have to fucking educate them. Well, you have two choices. Otherwise, it's not happening. Right. So your only choice is tell them what you think. Yeah. Well, how are you going to tell them? You can do it manually or you can do it virtually, yeah. but you have to do it. So you're going to do it one way or the other. The question is, why would I do it on Lightspeed? Well, the reason why is because training, real training takes good content. That's your knowledge. That's what you want them to do at, for you at your organization. Right. Then they need repetition. Telling them once doesn't work. Right. You, you got to practice that shit. You got to tell them a lot and you got to practice it. Mm-hmm. And then you have to hold them accountable. So if I hired you here, I could say, here's a password. When you're through the shit I want to tell you five times over, mm-hmm. now you're ready to do the job. So here's your password. I'll see you when you're done. Mm. Now I can go back and fucking not even worry about you. Why? Because everything I want you to know, I already recorded once and put it in the system. Now the system is going to track, measure, and monitor to see if you actually know it mm. with tests, practice, etc. So if I hired a salesperson here, I can give them a password and the system will spend hours and hours and hours telling that person what I've learned in 20 years, or I can do it manually. Now I can spend my time spending hours and hours. And by the way, saying the same shit I just said to the last guy I hired, but I didn't hire him at the same time. So now I just got to say it twice. Yeah. Well, there's no consistency. So why not get a system that costs 200 bucks a month? Because how many employees you got? Two right now. Okay. Well, dude, 200 bucks a month is the minimum. So you're paying 200 a month and you won't pay another dime to train your people until you break a hundred. 
So how the fuck do you train 100 people every day, 24-7, for less money? You can't. You can't, yeah. So the only other way you can do it is manually. Yeah. So if you choose manually, you're doing shit inconsistently. You won't, you won't, like let's say you hired me today, Mm -hmm. and me and you spent three weeks, dude, telling me everything. Mm -hmm. And then you hire this dude. Go do the same thing with him, and I'll bet you, you do not say the fucking same shit you did for me. Right. Which means... He either got better shit or he got worse. Right. He didn't get the same. Mm -hmm. So now you have inconsistency. Mm -hmm. And now you have turnover. And now this guy guy leaves because he didn't get trained as good. And guess what he says? That shit sucked. Underdog's a fucking asshole. Right. Well, now you just fucking produced a negative cancer out in the the world because you basically didn't have the time at the time to develop him consistently. Yeah. Give him all the information he needs to win. Yeah. So what so what's the solution? Well, the solution is get a program like Lightspeed. You don't need Lightspeed. Lightspeed's just the best. It's like you don't need a fucking Ferrari to get to the store. It's just the best. But you might as well have one if they cost the same as the rest of them. Right. But the point is is you get the machine, the $200 a month machine, and then you train the machine mm-hmm. once. Yeah. Once. And the machine will train the rest of your people with the repetition and the practice and the accountability and the tracking and the testing and the reports and the notifications. You're yeah. never you're never going to be able to do that. Yeah. So that's how you use it internally. You say, fuck, I don't have a receptionist. Well, then don't worry about receptionist training. But as soon as you hire a receptionist, what do you want that receptionist to know? So just imagine, if I had a receptionist, I'd want her to know this, 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 this. Good. Tell it to the machine. Tell it to light speed. I always tell people, you train light speed and let light speed train the fucking masses like, yeah. or, or, or just train the masses. But I can promise you one works better. Right. Exactly. One's cheaper. Yeah. One's more effective. One's less tiring and less exhausting. And you make way more by doing it my way, because guess what? You're not spending the eight hours to get him up to speed on something a fucking interactive video tutorial could have done. Exactly. And by the way, it doesn't replace talking to your employee. But listen, take this password, go through it five times, and then we'll talk. Now, prior to that, I would have had to tell you five times. I might have got frustrated. So now I give you a password, simple as that. I get five hours to go fuck off because let's say it took you five hours to take. So now you're through it. Now you come in and I say, any questions? Guess what? You might go, fuck no. I got it. I got it down, yeah. bro. I'm yeah. going to work and I'm productive instantly. Well, now you're winning. You go home. Your wife's like, baby, that's great. Now you're happy. I retained you. And I don't even realize it's because I fucking created a training system. Yeah. Most people miss the word system. You need a system to train people. Yeah. So and you can do it like- manually or you can do it virtually and you should do it virtually. But the cool part about Lightspeed and your, and your uh, deal is you also want to sell a course. Yeah. Well, dude, Lightspeed's the only system that can literally create unlimited training experiences. So you could build a system. Oh, wow. That so trains, I can train different types of people in my company for different roles. For different roles, for different and, reasons. When they log in, they hear, see, dip, do different things. But whenever you want to monetize, mm-hmm. you're not selling your employees. That's the 200 a month. Then right. you go, fuck, I could teach people how to do a podcast and sell it for 1000 bucks. Good. You press a button. Lightspeed morphs into a whole nother university. This one's called Underdog Podcast University. It's not what your employees log into. I mean, it is, but it doesn't right. do the same thing. Right. So now a, a, a person that bought a thousand dollar course logs in, you're popping up and greeting them and there's nothing in there about fucking how to run your company. Right. Only employees see that. So now all of a sudden you attach a thousand dollar price tag to it and now thousand people buy your course for a thousand bucks. What'd you do? Make a million. No, you trained them one time. Yeah. Or you can do what some people do, which is, you know, join my mastermind. And it's, you know, you, we're all coming to my house every week for nine weeks. Well, dude, that's another way to train people, but it's not as consistent. Right. It's not as inexpensive and it's not as effective. Yeah. So light speed's just the found. It's like this phone, dude. I could give you this phone and say, hey, you can call your girlfriend if you ever need to come back in a year. And that's all you ever use this for. Then I fucked you as a salesman because I should have said it's also a calculator. It's also a fucking video. It's also a camera. Right. It's also a freaking, you got the app store. Yeah. Like whatever you need, this device will help you with. Then you buy the same phone, you get more value out of it, right? Yeah. So the, the light speed system similar, dude. We, we help companies create content with all these studios and shit, or you can do it yourself. Right. We help people 
train people better. But the same training system is also a marketing system because mm. I can show you how to make content to generate leads, close deals, train the salesman, generate traffic, filter out applicants, screen applicants. That's what um, I need help with the filtering out the piece right there. Because I'm pretty good at the content part, pretty good at the marketing part. But that, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, well, screening is how would you screen manually? Right. Well, I'd set them in a room and I'd ask them, are you a convicted felon? <laughs> and, if, and if they fucking say yes, if they click yes, I'm going to say, I'm sorry. You have no you fucking belonging here. Right. Now, if they hit no, I say, okay, are you a fucking pervert of any kind? Right. You know, or whatever it is I'm going to ask you in person. Yeah. Dude, create a video that says, hi, thank you for applying to fucking underdog empowerment. Right. My name's Zach. Quick question. You ever been in prison? No. Sorry, bro. Looking for convicted felons. See ya. Yeah. And then you didn't have to ask that question, nor did Jeff take the call. Why? Because the person clicked the link. You you popped up, asked the same fucking question. Yeah. So when you ask Lightspeed, right? When you when you ask Lightspeed the question, you only do it once. Yeah. Lightspeed will go ask the fucking million other times you're gonna need to ask that question. Yeah. So Lightspeed's base internally, if you're gonna use it for a business, Lightspeed would be used to develop a training system or more like a awareness system for your organization. So when you start to grow and you bring on another camera guy, and by the way, you're not responsible for all the content. Take him and say, dude, should, tell, tell Lightspeed what you do all day. I'm talking about everything, dude. How you upload that video, where you upload that video, like you just tell Lightspeed. Now, next thing you know, he's sick. He quits. He gets hit by a truck. You hire a new guy. Here's a password. That dude will pop up and tell you fucking everything we do here. Mm. I'll be golfing. Or working, yes. or I'm doing other shit, more right. important. Because, dude, you don't need to keep repeating yourself over and over. It's like wiping your ass with a hula hoop. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yeah. So anyway, that's how you can use it internally. That's how you can use it externally. And that's just a few ways. I could literally spend four hours showing you ways to make interactive campaigns to get people to subscribe to your podcast. It's like, you can use Lightspeed to get people to subscribe to my podcast? Well, yeah. Why? Because Lightspeed is an interactive media delivery, tracking, and measuring system. That's genius. They're just, they just stuck me in a thing called LMS. Like, oh, people think it's training. Dude, I, I know people that have a Lightspeed system. They don't train anybody with it, dude. They generate fucking leads and filter out prospects. Yeah. And then they give the leads to the salesman. The salesman calls them. They don't even train their salesman on the system or with the system. And I'm like, how do you train your salesman? Oh, we have weekly meetings and Zoom meetings. I'm like, dude, are you fucking dumb? Like, put that shit in the system. Right. No, we don't care. And I'm like, I don't care if they don't care. It's like, if I give you this phone, dude, you don't want to call anybody? Don't, don't fucking call anybody. Yeah. But you definitely need a light speed system. 100%. And, and, and now the bomb squad's listening to this. They're thinking, fuck, I need a light speed system. <laughs> That's why I just revolutionized my pricing. Before, only big dogs could afford it. Now... You can sign up for a light speed system free. Mm. Zero. I waived all setup fees. Nice. You can go to lightspeedvt.com forward slash ready and spin up a fucking system. That's dope. No cost. Now, when you log in and you don't know what you're doing, fuck, I have services. I can help you. Now, that costs money. <laughs> but if you know what you're doing, and by the way, there's training inside the system because it's a training system. Right. So that's why I'm that's why I'm allowed to ask for money. Like I don't need to show you how to do it. It's already in there. Figure it out. It's right there. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go through the training. Oh, well then give me five grand. I'll do it for you. Right. So we can do all of it for you. So if I see you on Kajabi or fucking <laughs> some, one of my, them other turd systems, dude, you you just did yourself an injustice because I just revolutionized the pricing to where my shit's just as low or less than any turd system on the market. Right. And it allows you to have a marketing system, a training system, a filter system, a survey system, a feedback system. Yeah. I mean, in sexual it, harassment. <laughs> and I'm not just saying this just because I'm sitting here in here with you, but it makes, it doesn't make sense not to do it. If you got a fucking team, if you got fucking products to sell, your your are online courses, it, it makes total fucking sense to do it. I mean, why would you go through click funnels and have just that? shit where people could just click on a little module. You know well, dude, saying? listen, I mean, I know clients that have Lightspeed that also use ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels simply allows you to build a landing page quickly. Mm -hmm. It's not magic. Right. There's a lot of people that have ClickFunnels that's not working. Right. 
but it's not the click funnel that's not working. That's working. Right. Your copy's not working. Your product's not working. Your ad's not working. Your fucking retargeting's <laughs> not working. Like you don't know what you're doing. Click funnels is just a tool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you're the tool, well, then click funnels ain't going to help you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody thinks you got to make the button red and all that shit. What the fuck? Well, you well, got to have a good offer, dude. Well, again, well, exactly. <laughs> but, but the button red supposedly out of millions of things oh man people click red easier okay good that's called that those shortcuts like right. go go to click funnels and learn how to fucking use it join russell brunson's uh fucking inner circle dude right russell knows how to use it russell knows how to write copy right but exactly. guess what spin up a click funnel it don't <laughs> fucking tell you all that there's videos inside go check it out now if you want russell to come help you it's money yeah same thing with anything dude yeah exactly so so I expect to see you on Lightspeed when you're ready. Oh, yeah. And then call me, and I'll help you if you want me to. You know that's right. You know that's right. <laughs> and anybody listening, I'll help you all, too. <laughs> that's what we're doing, dude. I'm going to basically get every business in the country on Lightspeed. I'm going to show them how to create a l training system for themselves. And then inside Lightspeed, I've deployed what I call the skill shop, which is everybody's content inside Lightspeed. mm for all categories and topics. So now when you're a company, you, you want to make your own content for your employees. But what about sexual harassment? Maybe you don't know how to make that. Well, dude, just go into the skill shop and activate it. Maybe, maybe one of your stores likes Grant Cardone, but the other store doesn't. Well, then let one store turn on Grant Cardone and let the other store turn on somebody else. How yeah. do you do that? Well, because Lightspeed's the only system on earth that has password granularity, meaning I can create a different opportunity or experience is what we call it, a different training experience for it, for everybody. Like I could literally give you a password to a system. You log in and see 12 things, give him the same password. He sees 12 different things, but it's the same exact system. So yeah, same exact login. All same, that. same. Well, it's not the same login. Everybody gets their own uh -huh. username and password. Okay. It's unique. Yeah. But anyway, we'll go into that. It's now starting to sound like a fucking light speed commercial, which it, which it isn't. But again, obviously, you know that I'm passionate about it. And most yeah. people don't understand that, dude, all systems are not equal. Right. A Kajabi or I don't even know. Kajabi is the main one I fucking always hear about. I always say, dude, you're just going to get a hand Kajabi if you go with them. Because <laughs> if you want a training system, right. it's not a Kajabi. Kajabi is not a training system. Kajabi right. is a fucking video hosting solution. That yeah. allows you to sell a course. Yeah. Well, is your jo is your goal to sell a course? Maybe you don't need Lightspeed. Right. Maybe you're, you just need Kajabi. You're trying to teach people. Exactly. Yeah. But if you actually give a fuck if they're learning something, Kajabi doesn't do that, dude. Right. Kajabi does not train anybody on anything. It's just a fucking spot to put your video behind a paywall. Yeah. Lightspeed is an actual learning system. It goes through and makes you, it forces you to do repetition. It tests you along the way. It interactively adapts the content to you. So it keeps you engaged and it tests, tracks, monitors, measures. So someone can hold you accountable. Yeah. I went through your closer school. I just opened it up this week and uh, it was like, I'm in the very beginning and at the end of it, you asked like, are you new to sales? Are you got some experience or you're a pro or whatever? I hate the middle one or whatnot. I guess that's what you're talking about. Where different people coming at different entry points can go down. Different. Well, yeah, because dude, if you're a beginner, I might have missed a bunch of shit. But if you're if you're right in the middle, well, shit, I don't need to tell you about fucking firm handshakes and eye contact. <laughs> Goddamn, let's skip that. Like right. you you claim you're fucking pretty good. Well, then shit, let's forget the basics. Let's get to where we can you know get you better than you were. Right. But if you come in and you say you're awesome. Well, then I don't even need to tell you all that shit, do I? I'll start talking about even more advanced shit. Right. So, again, that's one way to use it. But also, when people go through that, I can say, did you realize 62% of people buying closer school are fucking beginners? Mm. Well, now what's that tell me? You should put out more content, more shit for beginners. Okay, see what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, the, the, the analytics, the two-way interactive data collection, that, it's yeah, unbelievable yeah. fucking information. Yeah. If you're asking, like... If you didn't ask anybody what what uh, how much money they make, how would you know how much money they make? Right. Would I didn't you? even think about that until you just said that. When you're yeah. asking those questions, you're getting that data back oh, yourself. Oh, you sure yeah. are. And it's all automatic and in real time, which means when you press a button, I could fire off something over to him and say, call this motherfucker. He wants coaching. Mm. Instantly. Like, as soon as you press that button, even if it's 2 a.m., he'll right. wake up and it'll be like, motherfucker wants coaching. Yeah. Like, how would I know that if I just let you watch my video? 
Yeah. I wouldn't. I'd wake up and be like, somebody watched it yesterday for 19 minutes. <laughs> well, who gives a fuck? Who were they? I don't know. Male or female? Don't know. Go check the funnel, see if they went and bought the... <laughs> what would they prefer? Don't know. Didn't ask. Do they like chocolate? I don't know. Didn't ask that either. Male <laughs> or female? No clue. Like, yeah. dude, you already got them going through your video. Why not add some interactivity? <laughs> Engage them. Yeah. All right, folks. Listen, I'm running out of time. Zachary, you want to you want to say anything to the bomb squad before we wrap this shit up? Yeah, man. If you guys uh, dig the interview, man, come check out the podcast. It's Underdog Empowerment. You can find it on any platform. What will they learn? Dude, you're going to learn it's the number one resource for underdog entrepreneurs to level up to get to the next level in their business and life. I don't have all the answers, but I stick my neck out on the line and go out and find the people that do. Damn, dude. If you guys don't go follow fucking Zach, come on, man. What you doing, dude? We're the bomb squad. We, A, use our fucking brains. That sounds like a common sense op, uh, proposition. <laughs> You're basically saying, dude, if I don't have the answer, I'm finding motherfuckers that do. Exactly. So it sounds like a dropping bombs competitor. No, nah, we're going to have you on the show. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> dude, again, I... I've had people with their own podcast come on and be like, you know, oh, I didn't want to mention my podcast. Fuck, dude, I don't care right. if every listener I have starts to listen to you and never listens to me again. Because the second I don't have any listeners, I just got more time. I'll shut the fuck up, turn off my podcast, and move on down the road. Right. I don't care. I'm trying to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. So if Zach has the knowledge or he's getting better knowledge or even different knowledge, and I don't say go follow Zach. Well, then fucking I ain't keeping it real. Mm. So go follow him, folks. Zachary Babcock. Don't worry about his name. <laughs> Zachary Babcock with Underdog Empowerment. Go to underdogempowerment.com and follow him on uh, IG. Zachary J. Babcock. And by the way, Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y. J as in jack off. You know that's Babcock. Right. You know, I always tell people when I was younger, I was a jack off. Everyone looks at me like, what's a jack off? You know, like a fucking thug, like a fucking jack off, like a run around, like a jerk off. You know what I'm saying? What, what's the new word for a jack off? Fuck. Oh, Irresponsible. Yeah. yeah. Back before me, before my days, we, they were called, um, oh, what's that fucking word they'd call troublemakers back in the day? <laughs> you know, back in like happy days, like the fucking 60s. Yeah. They, they con constantly have a fucking new new nickname it's folks if you can't figure out how to win seek the knowledge underdog empowerment sounds like an opportunity mm. to seek some knowledge how many episodes you on uh we're, we got 108 recorded and we just released 94 the other which, which which means another thing you're real because when people say brad be on my podcast you know what i say what i'll be your hundredth guest or more like, as long as I'm on the hundredth episode or better, right? I'll do it. Right. And they go, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then they're like, why, why a hundred? Well, because you might not get past 13, dude. Right. And you if gotta, you're not you going to continue to do it, what the fuck does it matter? Exactly. So I always say a hundred. If you get to a hundred, dude, you got a real podcast. Not that you don't on the way, because obviously neither of us had a hundred at some point. Right. But- you know, most, you're committed at that Yeah, point. most people just aren't going to stick with it. They're going to do a podcast or two. They're not going to get all the downloads. You're going to, what the fuck am I wasting my time for? They're not, they're not going to stick to it long enough to make your episode worthwhile. Yeah. So good job on that, dude. And, and it's everywhere, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. I'll fucking listen to it. Bomb Squad, listen to that shit. Until next time. Mm -hmm.